What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Truth Life Podcast. Today, we got a special guest, my guy, David Jackson. Um, David Jackson's a professional basketball player out here in France. Um, I met him a couple of years ago. You know, he's been solid, dominant since I met him. You know, he had a great keep career. And uh, I think he's a good guy that you guys can learn some things from. And I wanted to get him on the podcast and he accepted it. Very thankful for you to be up on here, David. Uh, what's up with you, bro? T. Tyron Johnson, I appreciate you. Man, I appreciate first, I appreciate you having me. All right, Mr. Make them Pay, you know, true. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Was that Mr. MVP? <laughs> A few, two years, you know, out here, you know, Mr. Lead Score out here, all this, Come stuff, on, all these uh, accomplishments. <laughs> no, I got I to gotta say, uh, all these accomplishments, man. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm happy about our friendship and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you get on the court with the peep and stuff like that. You're my rival and everything on the court and stuff. But off the court, you know, it's nothing but love. I support you and the things you got going on. So uh, I appreciate you having me. Oh, 100, man. So let's start Let's start at the beginning, man. You are, you're from Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis 10. When you were young, did you think you would be doing what you're doing today? Man, no. I'll be honest with you. No, I did not. I mean, so how uh, was it like I knew in uh, I loved basketball from a young age? You know, you love, so, I know what I'm saying. So, how was it like during those young age? Were you just playing just to pass time or was it a passion of yours? How'd you get started with the game? Yeah, so I just started actually just playing, playing ball, uh, playing 21 and stuff, pick up ball outside, things like that. And um, that's where I found my love uh, from the game. And I was, I was growing, I was getting tall, you know. And uh, so they saw me, they called me, you know, slim, skinny, all these names I had kind of, kind of growing up and stuff, you know, because I was tall, skinny kid. And uh, I just I just grew into the game. I mean, in my, you know, you're in Memphis, you had Penny Hardaway. That's from Memphis. So you hear some of the things he did. You hear some hometown legends, Snap Hunter. He played ball in um, Italy for many years. And you hear some of these guys' names growing up. And then you're watching, you're watching TV, you want to see, you see Kobe's and stuff like that. And you, so, you know, uh, the game of basketball just stuck with me. Uh, I was good at it, so it was, it was my passion from, uh, from the beginning. Plus, in my area, basketball keep you away from some of the bad things. You know, when you're growing up in, in neighborhoods like probably where you're from, I'm from, you know, you got gangs, you got drugs, you know, you got a lot of things, you know, cliques and stuff, you, you got kids robbing people and doing things like that so you know i knew and i felt like i didn't want to go that route i saw a lot of my friends and stuff it was people getting killed around me at 14 15 years old and stuff you know i didn't want to go that route so basketball when i went kind of heavy and strong with the basketball i got you so i mean that's a that's kind of like most of our stories man it's it's crazy you know some people just get to live and be a kid but we gotta avoid so much but no excuses. We here today, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. what was the recruiting process like? Was you heavily recruited out of high school, or was it some last minute type situation? Um, I I had a well in high school. I had a pretty solid high school career for myself individually. I was on my high school team. We were losing a lot in high school. I never made it to state or anything like that. Probably made the city. I think uh, one time, one time, maybe twice. Um, and I'm in a small high school in the hood, you know what I'm saying? It was really no no hookers, no no name, big names coming out of my high school during that time. Um, you know, in my high school you had you had uh, metal detectives and stuff, you had shootouts, you had uh gang fights all all throughout the day, you had people getting arrested in school all the time, you know, it was just things like this happening. So it wasn't big on people coming there for basketball. So I just kind of, I, like I said, I stuck with basketball. You know, me and my guys that I came with kind of stuck with basketball. And uh, I was able, thank God, I was able to be pretty good at it. Um, so probably my, my I, what, what blessed me also, my high school coach, now he's uh, he's an assistant, well, he's a manager, assistant with the University of Memphis right now. His name is Rodney Hamilton. Just so happened, my sophomore year, he was he just finished just retired from playing ball in uh, China Japan and he retired he retired early he was 27 years old retired he had some knee problems point guard 
he came and he was my high school coach. And he was one guy that kind of opened my eyes and helped me a little bit, kind of motivated me. I didn't know how good I was. I'm sure he saw it, other people saw it, but I didn't know. So he woke me up a little bit. And I say my junior, senior year, I was putting up 21, 22 a game. My junior year, I was putting up 25. My senior year, um, I was playing AAU, summer ball, with some big names out of my out of my uh, city, like Sean Williams, um, that went to the University of Memphis, Andre Allen. Um, I played AAU ball, Corey Brewer, some guys. We won the AAU Nationals down in um, 17 and under 2003. We played against some of the best high school ball players. We won the AAU National Tournament. So playing some of those those summer balls that got me heavily recruited from Oklahoma, Colorado, um, Arkansas State, uh, Memphis, you know, Coach Cal and stuff. I was having, I was, you know, going up there with them. They talking about going to prep school for me and stuff. I didn't want to go that route. Mm-hmm. Go to prep school. Then I come back to Memphis, you know, I didn't want to go that route. And so the route that I chose, instead of going to a big school and a big 12, I I wanted to put, I wanted to make an impact immediately. Not saying that I could have went to a I, I couldn't have went to a large school and did it, but I had just experienced playing summer ball with some of the good players around Memphis, and I was more I was a shooting guard, but I was more the guy that's okay. Y'all can do what y'all want to do, and finally when y'all can't do nothing, I'm open for the three point shot. Mm-hmm. I was more like that with this AAU team. You know, it was, it was I was playing with pros and stuff, so. I say to myself, I don't want to go that route in college. Right, <laughs> so right. I went, I picked me a major. I went to, I went to the University of Western Illinois. I had a good experience there on my, on my uh, trip there and stuff like that. Uh, so I ended up going mid major, uh, Western Illinois. Got you. And uh, Western yeah. Illinois, did you start as a freshman? Started, started as a freshman, started all four years. Uh, I think uh, over four years, uh, my average is uh, 14, 13 and a half, 14 points over my four years. Start as a freshman every year. Um, I average over ten points. So, so what would you uh, say was your size going into your freshman year of college? What 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 was your size? Six four, one hundred and sixty five pounds, soaking <laughs> exactly. wet. Exactly. You see, <laughs> so, one thing one thing that's common is every player was undersized. Well, most most players are undersized. And they they needed that one player. They needed that one mentor to fall in love with them, to help them see who they are. And just like you had your coach, I had um, a guy. He was my baseball coach, but he was like a father figure too. Um, I went to college six six one sixty. So, okay. <laughs> you know, so it's like I hear I get so many excuses Ooh, from yeah, guys yeah, about yeah. they're not big enough. I'm like, no, no, no. You don't understand. Most guys go to college one sixty one seventy, and they put on pounds when they get to college you know what i'm saying so takes time sometimes all right so mm-hmm. you four years at western mm-hmm. western illinois and then you where was your first job as a pro first job as a pro uh in montenegro uh montenegro team called bella Poya. and uh man oh uh, wow yeah, i tell you uh i'm bl- like you know wow I think back to that it was 13 years ago, bro, and uh, I wanted to quit that first year that I got over there to Montenegro. I was ready to give up. I mean, uh, just being away from home. First, I was at home. I, I was away from home because I was in college. It wasn't that so bad to be away, but being in another country, no one really speaks English. Right. Then my payment, my first year, my pay that I was getting, I, I'm ashamed to even tell people. What I got paid my first year. I mean, I I was making. I could have worked at McDonald's in Memphis or Wendy's, a Burger King in Memphis, and I would have made more money working there than I made per month working right. my first job. So that can I let that tells you how much I was making. Right. So um, I really went for, for the love of the game, and I can say I love the game. I, I left my I left my son left my family and came to Montenegro for the love of the game to try to spark my uh, pro career, right. and that's what thank God that's what I was able to do. Uh, but it was it was definitely tough. Uh, and for a lot of people watching here, who who 
who uh, who's watching your podcast, bro, and who who may uh who have dreams to play pro and they're doing great and they want to slack off. I would I would tell you guys to stay hungry, stay on your job. In college, I was doing good in my books all my my year, my semester. I waited to the basketball season to finish of my senior year to start slacking off. And I messed around and I had to, I fell a class and I had to take summer classes. Um I I'm senior just graduated, still I gotta go back and take a summer class. I was supposed to be in workouts. I was supposed to be talking, you're talking about like NBA workouts, stuff like that. Work. I was supposed to be doing workouts, but I had to go back and I had to finish class, you know? Uh, and so I missed out on a lot of, I missed out. I wanted to get my degree, you know, that I promised my mom that that's what I'm going to do, go to college, get my degree. And I had to make a choice. Either I'm going to go and try to do these workouts, which I probably could have did good. I may be better to get paid or I'm going to stay in my school in the summertime. I finished and I stayed. I made that choice. All the time, my agents stopped messing with me. I feel like people kind of gave up on me, you know. And mm. here go one, one Montenegrin agent. He kept following me, kept telling me about this job. And I would didn't want to go. Finally, it's like September. I'm like, okay, I'm going. I'm going to keep this basketball alive, you know. And I went. So mm, that's that's crazy. See, I quit school. Wow. They gave me the opportunity when they told me about I had like 32 workouts. Yeah. I was like, look, finish this degree, or I was projected late first, early second. And I'm like, I'm out of here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So see that's if you projected like if I would have been projected like that, maybe I would have took a but I wasn't. So I wasn't no, you know, but it's interesting that people don't know like that, that you gotta make that decision. People don't know that, that that's a real life decision that you have to make whenever you're not a big time prospect. You know, and, yeah. and that gets yeah. that gets overlooked whenever you're speaking about playing professional, not in the NBA. Because literally my mom was yeah. a teacher. Um, I mean, I was big on books, but I I just knew this was my only shot. Cause I was, I only played one year of college. So I was like, all this momentum I got okay. going on. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, I ain't missing Don't this. So I just quit, you know, but yeah. yeah, it's interesting. And another thing is, is that I'm trying to get, make sure that I hope you guys paid attention. They said that he can, he could have made more money at McDonald's because when I tell guys that your first job might have to be 20 grand, 15 grand, I know countless amount of players that went on to play EuroLeague. They went on to play at Euro Cup, top European team that started off. Man, they started, grand, you know, started so off like that. Yeah, it's, it's looked down upon yeah. because guys want to yeah. come back home. You know, when you play overseas, nobody knows how much money you make. So when you come back home, you popping bottles to give the illusion that you're balling like this, but they don't understand that you was just balling out of nowhere. You know? Yes, yes, yeah. And and I think in the states, you know, since we're American, and we're more talking to people in the states. In the states, I think we have a, uh, we kind of like. I never really thought about playing basketball in Europe. I never knew when it existed. I was in the states, I never thought about Europe. Like, so come on, so yeah, so I never thought of because playing basketball. If you're not in the NBA in the states, if you're not in the NBA, but you're playing somewhere else, you're just not good. You're not. <laughs> you're not all that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that that's another thing why people don't want to go over here. Also, because also look at the people when they go to the league first, second year. Most people, they're millionaires already, or they just about, right, first year. So you got to come out here and make only 20 to 50 grand your first year. Something is not, something not right. I can't do this. This is, they messing me up. They messing me over. I'm not earning, I'm not earning what I'm worth. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so I think some people can be like that, so they turned off. But, um yeah, as we do know, because we we experience it sometimes in Europe with a lot with some a lot of people. You got to kind of start, you know, start low and then you work your way up and stuff. And then when they see that you're a real pro, they start respecting you and stuff. You know, and I feel like that's how it was for me. And shit, man, we 13 years later now, and you know, you had a pretty successful career, and you know, you well respected everywhere, especially here in France. Uh, what's Thanks. your tra- what's your training like? Do you do weights? Do you uh, do a lot of uh, on court? Uh, what do you, how, how's your how's how, what's a weekly training schedule like for you today as a thirteen year vet now? Man, oh uh, wow, good question. Um, I'm really trying to steal ooh, you stuff. So, so 
No, yeah, I'm trying to. It's all good because I'm gonna ask you the same thing. Uh, so uh, that's a good question. Um, well, with basketball, you know, we got these practices and stuff, and you know, in Europe, like I'm sure you probably told on a lot of your podcasts, in Europe, we practice. Teams really do practice. Practices, you do more than you actually do in the game in practice, right? Mm-hmm. And so you know, in NBA, what they got so many games that their practices are more shoot around, you know. But here in Europe. We we have two, three games a week. When we finally have our practice, we're still going to go five on five, full court. So we're going to play, pick up defense, all the stuff you're going to do. And so um, with all those practices and stuff we having at home, I do nothing. I eat, I chill, I relax. I try to leave everything basketball. I try to leave that at home, I me mean, at the gym. Everything that I need to do basketball, I really try to lead at, at the gym. I mean, here at night, the only thing I do may, maybe is stretch. I'm stretching. I'm rolling out before I go to sleep. I got to take me a nice shower. I, I do me some nice stretch and breathing, things like that. You know, I roll out or something like that. I try to rest when I'm here at home. But you talk about before practice, we got two, two a day. Man, we got practice at 10 o'clock in the morning. Most of the day, I'm showing up at like 9, 15, 9, 20. I got to get warmed up on the ground. I got to do my core. You know, I got to do little things like that for my back. Core, you know, that's kind of the most important. I might go over there and start doing squats and stuff like that. Just little things to try to keep, 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 get myself warmed up. And then I'm trying to shoot, I'm trying to do form shooting, touches, layups, little things slow, kind of slowly though, not fast, not hard, but just get my touches and stuff. So those are some things I do before practice. After practice, I'm out of there stretching. Yeah. I'm out. Probably the next practice, I do the same thing, core core work and everything, back stuff, some of the same workouts. I try to be there early to get some shots up. After practice, I'm stretching. I'm out of there. I used to, when I was younger, let's say five, six years ago, I would shoot after practice. Now I like to shoot before practice. I like to go ahead and get a kind of like before you do a game, you're going to shoot before a game. So I try to shoot before practice. I try not to do no shooting after practice, you know. Uh, plus, Coach C, Coach C, the oldest guy in the gym shooting out of practice, he might think he ain't doing enough, you know. So <laughs> he might be like, oh, we're not practicing guys hard enough. You got this old this old guy, this old-ass guy out here. He's still shooting. Hmm, tomorrow we're going to go three hours, you know. <laughs> yeah, nice. So, yeah, but, man, yeah, but, uh, you know, you're talking about diets and stuff. Man, first I thank my wife. I thank God for my wife. Mm-hmm. From my wife, she cook, she take care of me. You talking about eating good, eating healthy, salads and stuff every day. You know, well, we don't eat no pork. We try not to eat no pork. We eat more fish, um, turkey, chicken, things like that. You know, and I eat pretty good. My wife is making good meals and stuff here, mm-hmm. so I eat. You know, but other than that, like you asked me. What I'm doing 13 years in, it's more what I do at the gym. Uh, lifting weights as a team, we only lift like once, sometimes twice a week. I might, I might go to the gym when stuff, when, when gyms, like, I may try to get in there and do something. I don't, I don't lift heavy during season. Talking about getting up in there, just maintaining and doing some stuff, you know. So I know a few years back, I would, uh, lift right before practice. I was, man, we got practice at three. So I'm going to go do lift weights at 1.30, something like that, and do a little weights and then go into my practice. Uh, four years when I was at Rowan, I used to do stuff like that. But now I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, but, man, stretching, that's about it. I got you. I got you. So you say you don't what you, eat. What do you do? Me? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> man, I try to, I mean, I say it's a game week, right, in the summer. Yeah. I, I'm pretty, yeah. I'm pretty, in the summers, I'm pretty crazy. So I just go to like to like a okay. game week during the season. Uh, okay. no, normally it's, uh, I lift two, two times a week. I would, on the days I don't lift, if we play on a Saturday, I lift Tuesday and Thursday, Monday, okay. Wednesday, Friday, I'll do yoga. And Sunday I'll do yoga for recovery after the game. On, on that Wednesday, the middle of the week, I would do a uh, cold bath. I would, uh, work with the trainer and get like a full body massage. Um, yeah. Every day before practice, I normally work my ankles for like 10 minutes. Okay. Every, 
every day and before practice. Yeah. I also do like 10 minutes of ball handling right before practice. Just because practice start at 5.15, from 5 to 5.10, I do like 10 minutes of ball handling. And then I'll do some running and stuff right before we start. And I'm a big, we have optional practices in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I go to most optional practices and I typically stay after practice. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So okay. basically I, uh-huh. I make 1,500 shots a week. I make 1,500 shots a week. I try to make Ooh. 250 a day. Yeah, I just try to make Ooh. 250 a day. That's that's yeah. why you troop. That's why that's why it's been it's been paying. That's why it's been paying off for you too. Yeah, so I, I see the work. The ball handling for you. It, you talking about a power forward, four man in the same year or whatever. You're handling. You know you handle the ball like a guard. You probably could bring the ball down the court on a guard if you really wanted to. You know. Right. So I, so I can see that ball handling. You put in that work with the ball handling. Uh, you know, and it's funny, like you said, how you said that. It's, it's pro players, and I try to talk to my son and stuff. Uh, like, it's pro players. We know time. We we manage time great. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, 5, 10, 5, 5, 5, 10, I do this, da, da, da. You know, because time is just about everything. But if you're trying to get up and get a certain amount of shots in before your practice, you're trying to do this before your practice. Your time is everything. I need to get massage before or after. You know that you got to show up at this time, you know, so – it's kind of you know it's funny hearing that from you how you said for this many minutes i'm doing this and then this i'll stop yeah you know yeah massages i get a lot of massages too yeah so uh i try to get away from the massages i i do massage once a week and i i mean my yogas Mm -hmm. pretty much take the place of that massage you know what i'm saying because massages for me it was Uh like um i would get super sore from massages and i'll feel better two or three days later but i just wanted Uh that the, the yoga was also a strengthening mechanism for my core too. So yes. I've, I've been, yes. I've been, I've been towing back and forth with that, but yeah, man, it's been, it's been working. Yoga, you know what okay. I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm one of the players. I got to see the ball go through the net. You know what I'm saying? So whenever I get hot, yeah. it's like, well, yeah. I've been here before. And most of my workouts, I, yeah. I don't shoot. Like I don't make 10 in the, in the spot. I try to make seven in a row or I try to make 10 in a row. I always try yes. to do things in a yes. row. Yes. And if it, that's too easy, then I'll yes. go like all net or something like this, like five all net. Okay, now. okay. So just okay. to get my uh, yeah, you grind, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm I'm starting to tad Thank bit a little back a little bit though because I've been you know with the two practices practice kind of physical. I've been kind of overworking myself a little bit, I would say. But you know you you put some pressure on yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whenever you get older. Well, whenever I get older, it's like now I have to reprove myself to myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? Come on, oh man, this is this is so good talking to you, bro. I love this. this is, yeah, yes, because so. you know we can't do some of the same things that we did, you know, five years ago, something like that, or ten years ago. We can't do some of the same things okay. that we were able to do, right? So, like you said, you got to refine yourself. You got to do find something else, and 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 that's. So, so, so what you're saying and stuff, I, I feel like I used to grind like that, like shooting a seven in a row, making seven in a row or something. I used to do all that stuff. I'd be in the gym for an hour and a half after, after practice, you know what I'm saying? Shoot, try to, you know, but when these legs <laughs> start, yeah. start yeah. hurt. I usually do it in the yeah. morning when we don't have that, when we, like, when we have that light practice in the morning, that's when I usually get it in. In the evening, I always finish with like something yeah. a little more intense, but it's only like five, 10 minutes, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Just to get through. But yeah. after practice, yeah. I'm not yeah. I'm not doing that after practice. Yeah. I, but before, if it's not a lift day uh-huh. or in the morning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um Yeah, yeah. And you know, the older older again, I'm trying to keep finding ways to help myself to improve. Like I I have my mind. I want to get better. I have my mind today. I, I wanna get do this, I wanna get myself better. But sometimes the body, the legs, stuff like that, back, something, you know, might be hurting. You know, here you are all week you're practicing against guys 22, 24, chasing around them, staggers and stuff, all this stuff in practice, mm-hmm. you're doing all this stuff. So so I, I feel like I had to kind of um, be smarter on my grind, almost have my stuff just about written out. I have to look at film and see what's going on in the game, what I'm good at, what I don't need work out on maybe or what I need to tune up and then I had to start putting a little bit more time into those specific things you know and something else 
I don't do as much, you know. So, uh, yeah, we, yeah, that's good. No, I understand. Now, um, I don't want to keep you too much longer, man. I know you got to go. Wonder, you know, your father now. So, speaking about fatherhood, what is it like um, being a professional athlete in Europe, in a whole nother um, country, another continent? being a father and playing the game, because that's a whole different responsibility. <laughs> oof, oof, oh man. Uh, so I got two kids, mm-hmm. got two kids. I have uh, my oldest son, he'll be 17 in two days. Chandler Jackson from Memphis, he played basketball and I have my son, he's four, he's here with me. And I'm away from my son, um, Chandler, of course, uh, he's in the States, I've been away from him just about his whole life. You know, I had him when I was in high school, uh, my last year, I left, I went to college. So I was eight hours away. You know, he was able to come visit me. I was able to drive sometimes to come back home. I'm with him in the summertime. He's with me every day, all the time when I'm in the summertime. But it's difficult. I can say that much. Uh, sometimes it's really sad. I'm more sad for him. I'm sad myself and I'm more sad for him. Just because I miss out on a lot of opportunities. Um, a lot of things that he's doing. Um, a lot of school activities, a lot of uh, prizes and things, uh, birthday parties, all this type of stuff. You know, I miss. Uh, he's playing basketball. He's pretty good. Um, he just, my son in high school, he's a junior. He just, he just um, a month ago, two months ago, he just went over a thousand points mm. in his high school. I couldn't be there. I wasn't, I wasn't able to, to be there to celebrate, to hold the trophy. So, um, you know, but. Uh, what I can say, I thank God for my family back in the States, my like parents and my brothers, sisters. I thank God for you know, my son, his, his mom. We really don't have, never had problems, really. Um, when we were younger, maybe a little bit. But their family, how they let me work with them. If I want to get a flight over here for him or something, you know, they let me do it. They, you know, they let me be in his life um, like I want to. Um, they let my family be in his life, you know, like they want to. Um, so like I said, I'm blessed with them and we have a good relationship, me and my son. Um, we talk just about every day we, or writing with each other just about every day. Um, but, um, for me, it, it motivates me. I can say that because, um, this is one reason I play for to take care of my son. You know, I, I was, when I was younger, I said, okay, I got a son. I got to make ends meet. I got to make some money. Basketball is what I'm good at. I'm here in Europe. Let me try to do good. Let me try to make the money I can. Save, you know, so I can pay bills and do things. So I've been able to put him in a private school and pay for that and do things like that. So uh, uh, we blessed, but I'm, I'm over here playing because of my oldest son, and he's playing basketball. He's looking, he's looking up at me. You know, I got to hear it from him when I have bad games. <laughs> That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I gotta when I yeah, I gotta hear. I hear from him when I have some games. Uh, you like calling me or writing me, you know, after the game, like, oh, dad, you got to work with your free throws, man. You know, or you need to work with your tray ball. What's going on? Or, you know, something like that. Or he calling me, hey, you did real good. I see you. You know, you're looking like the goat of the family. You know, he's still kind of encouraging me and motivating me. So when I'm working out and I'm talking about my body, I'm, I'm trying to do it for basketball here to do good. But I want to, for my son, I want to kind of still stay good, you know, Stay strong as a player, you know. So uh, my son back in the states, he really motivates me. That's, that's uh, when I had him, it changed everything in my life. And, and having my son here with me, my, my youngest son, it's um, it's different. Like I used to have practices, bro, and I would be able to come home and lay down, <laughs> rest, oh, no nap something, time. take it, do nothing. No, not no nap time. <laughs> you know, I'm coming. I'm coming home from practices, bro, and I'm like, I'm like, uh, as soon as I walk in the door, hey, dad, hey, dad, oh, pick me up, boom, let's go play, let's go. I'm like, all right, hold on, so like, you know, I gotta let me t- unpack my bag, let me put my stuff in the dirty clothes, you know, he ready, he's ready to go, he's ready to go, you know. And the wife, she coming in, she like, you know, Oliver, let him, let you know, your daddy, he gotta eat, he gotta have his coffee, you know, you know, he gotta do his thing, let him be, you know, but he's ready to go, you know, he know this stuff I need to do, but he's just ready to see dad. Um, I remember a few years back, like we lost, like I remember just my son, he's four now, he's bigger, but I remember when he was just barely walking, 
he didn't know what's going on with basketball or anything. And I was a roll in. And I remember, you know, you can have a bad day or something in practice. You can be overwhelmed. You walk in the door and you see this little bitty boy talking about daddy, daddy, daddy. You know, everything that goes. changes everything. Everything that happened in the gym, everything goes away. So, mm-hmm. man, kids are a beautiful thing. They're a blessing. They're a joy. I'm thankful for my two sons. Um, so, uh, yeah, fatherhood, I think, is, is, is very important for men to be in their kids' lives, whether it's a boy or a girl. First of all, it's, it's important for parents, but I think it's really important for men, especially right. men to be in young boys' lives. Right. Men to be in young boys' lives. Like, I know I'm not there physically with my son, but just for his mom and, you know, for them allowing me to have this relationship that I have with my son, that when he messes up or he's slipping, that she's writing me a call of me saying, you need to, you need to talk to this boy, you know, okay, you, yeah, need yeah. To, you need to holler at him. This right here gives me, I feel like I'm doing something kind of good, you know, I'm doing something uh, good. I'm giving the right advice or maybe I'm handling something a certain type of way that's good. Um, so I just say anyone watching, you know, I don't know, kids, something, playing ball in Europe and you got kids back in the States, you know, whatever, just uh, continue. You know, if not, go ahead and be in your kid's life, you know. Um, I think it's very, very important. We all know that. Right, I got you. Yeah, I'm big on I'm, I'm big on that, man. I got the same issues, you know. I got nieces and nephews. I don't got no kids, but I got nieces and nephews that I miss all of those moments, and it bothers me. I just missed my goddaughter mom uh, birthday last week, and you know, I'm just sending her bread, just sending her gifts and stuff like that. Even like sending my mama stuff, it's like, yo, I'm mi- my mama's getting older. She's seventy, you know what I'm saying? So just sending money home doesn't make up for those experiences, um, those, you know what I'm saying? Those, those memories, yes, yes. So, experiences and memories, yes. Just one, one last quick question, because I won't hold you, like I said, I won't hold you too much. We can go all goddamn night. <laughs> but um, you said- Yeah, I, we can go. <laughs> I've heard you um mention God a lot, and it's something I like to ask people because I got yeah. my own process, and okay. I, I used to be a Christian for 25 years. I always say this, I guess yeah. people know it. For 25 years of my life, yeah. I was a Christian, and- uh, yeah. It gave me a sense of purpose. It gave me a sense of uh, motivation. It's almost like uh-huh. I used to dedicate. Like that was me respecting God. Does religion play a yeah. part in your in your in your in your goals? Does religion play a part in your makeup in life? As far as being a professional athlete, being a dad, uh, being a positive role uh-huh. model. Because you're bigger than just a dad. You're a dad to a couple of people's around. You probably don't know it, but you you're bigger <laughs> than what you think you are. You know. So, wow, I like that. You're bigger than you think you are. I love that. That's for sure. Goal. So yeah, do you think that you think, you, you think that your belief plays a role in uh just the way that you're grounded and the way that you've developed as a man? Uh man, great question. Wow, nice question, bro. Uh, to think of it, um I think I think so. Um of course, of course, you know, just because of saying I'm a Christian doesn't mean I'm better than somebody else. Doesn't mean that I'm perfect. Doesn't mean I won't make mistakes or anything. You know that. But also just uh, being a Christian, um, I think that's that's my identity. You know, and uh, and I always pray these prayers like uh, before games that uh, I want to be Christ like things like that. Like I know where I'm from. I know where I can take it with people. I know how I can be. How I can get. I know that back in the day I would fight over basketball. Uh-huh. You know, I know that in practices or something, I feel like if someone will listen, I'd be ready to go to somebody's face or something. But just being a Christian and representing that and the prayers that I pray to help me to represent Christ and to be Christ like, that can kind of slow me down in games when I want to curse somebody out. I want to rip somebody apart. I want to go at the referees, which I kind of still do sometimes, <laughs> you know. But I have to represent, you know, I'm not only doing it for myself, I'm, I'm trying to represent. Christ and, and live godly. So sometimes with basketball, it does help me to kind of stay grounded, to remember who I am. And also also with that saying, to remember who I am, I mean, you know, being a Christian, you're talking about faith and belief and to, to, to have courage, um, to be strong, to have courage, to have faith, to have belief, stuff to believe in yourself, to, to encourage yourself, to encourage others. 
for me, this is all also what I take uh, from trying to, to to represent Christ and stuff like that. And um, like, I have no reason to be scared on the court. I have no reason to be shaky on the court or anything when I know that God is on my side. You know what I'm saying? So that's I try to also. It's gonna that's gonna be a clip. Huh? That's gonna be a clip. That's gonna be a highlight clip. <laughs> oh, okay, there it is. So I just I just kind of feel yeah. I just kind of feel that's that's how I am. So. I do feel like having God in my life for basketball, it also helps me. You know, a lot of people, a lot of young kids, uh, since I've been playing here in France, I say young kids because we have, what, young kids on our teams, 19, 18. And I get questions from some of these young kids that ask me, hey, what do you do mentally? It was like, man, that game, you weren't making no shots all game. And then how did you take the shot to win the game? How did you – and – and I'm what they ask me, what how do I stay mentally strong? How do I stay like this? How do I and I say, you know, look, you put in the time. I know one thing, I got God on my side, then I know I put in the time and the work. I know because I put in my time, my work in the game, and that it gotta eventually show off. Right? And so if it don't show off today in practice or it don't show off today's game, it's coming. It's gonna show out next game. Right? It's gonna it's coming. It's coming. So you know, um, so I always try to tell young guys mentally, you have no, because you prepared, because you did everything that you knew you were supposed to do leading to this week, you put in time effort and you got God on your side, you can't lose. You know what I'm saying? You can't fail. If, you, if you're courageous, if you have no fear. See, with me, I feel like with God on my side, I have no fear. I have no doubt. I have no negative. I have no negative. Even though people get mad in games and stuff and being, being That's upset passion. and panicking, I feel like I feel like panicking and stuff. Everybody's coming to the oh man, what's going on? I'm the one to say, yo, relax, calm down. All right, we good, yo. Let's just, you know, we have to grind this. You know, that's me trying to stay calm and stuff like that. That's me trying to represent represent God. So uh, yeah, I, I have my family, we, we believe in God. I believe in God. I might stray away. You know, I might do some things like we all do, stuff like that. But it definitely does keep me grounded. Like you said, that's a good question to ask me. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, I don't want to rant. This, this is about you. But it was like, do you remember we played against okay. y'all in Rowan when I hit the game winner? <laughs> no, if you remember that game, I had three fouls in the first half. I didn't play the whole first. Yeah. I didn't play the whole first half. I probably played like three minutes, yeah. five minutes. And yeah. the same question came. It was yeah. like, yo, how did you stay focused the whole time? I think I finished with like 22. I was like, bro, it's like, I know I'm making 1,500 shots a week. So it's yeah. like, I don't have, yeah. I don't have God to lean on. And since I've lost, yeah. since I've lost God, I put myself uh-huh. in that, that position and I trusted, okay. I trusted the grind. If you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's no fear for me now because I think that uh-huh. that's, I think that that is, that is, um, that is the, the key to life that I've, found me and Paul George used to talk about this. We were so losers, big time yeah. so losers. When yeah. I started not caring about losing and just playing to win and letting whatever happens happens, my career changed like this. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. My career changed like this. Okay. I used to blame everyone. And the main person I used to I, I never took accountability. I would always say Jesus got me. Until I like I, I'm from the South South. So <laughs> Like yeah. so, everything. Oh, I messed up. Jesus is gonna forgive me. Uh, yeah. I mess with I mess with a thousand girls. Oh, Jesus is gonna forgive yeah. me. I never yeah. looked in the mirror. Yeah. and was like, bro, you're not working like you're supposed to be working. You being dishonest. You not eating right. You lying and manipulating people. And when I started Ooh. taking accountability and started saying, yo, yeah. I'm gonna just trust this grind. And if it works, it works. If I if I miss, yeah. I miss. I might get some criticism, yeah. but we got another game yeah. next week. We got another game this week. That's that's it. Yeah. You know, and we all know we're gonna come with it out here in Europe. You're gonna get criticized. You know how to you're gonna be the blame blame and stuff like that. So for me, I'm like, if we're gonna lose this game, we're gonna lose, they're gonna blame. We might they might blame. So if I'm gonna lose, at least let me go out swing. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so out swing. You know, you know, so that's my line. That, I tell them I'm going out swing. Yeah, so you know. <laughs> I'm going out, yeah, let me go out swing. And if we're gonna lose this game, let me go out swing. Because if we win this game, I'm gonna be the one that's gonna help us make, you know. Right. So 
But um, that's 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 uh, accountability. Some people people don't do that these days. And that's good to hear from a veteran that's been out here all these years that you're still able enough, man enough to look in the mirror sometimes when you mess up in games or maybe practices, you know, and humble yourself and to come down and say, boom, I know I didn't play good. I see it all the time when you write stuff, you know, on your uh, your, 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 on your uh, posts and stuff on your Facebook, on your page, boom, I can do better. I didn't play good. I can do better. Like a lot of people, they don't do that stuff. They will kind of hide behind it or something like that or, you know, try to blame other people and give a, a whole nother reason why this, why this didn't happen. I was hurt. I was this. You've been hurt all this year. Yeah. And you still over there writing stuff, talking about I played bad and I didn't play good and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So you, you, but you, you good. You, I think you, you a good, um, I think I wrote it earlier for you, bro. People here and friends, they have to enjoy you while you're here. Right. And stuff like that. And I hope for teammate, your teammates and people, Instead of the organization of blow, I hope they can really recognize and see what they got. You know what I'm saying over there. You know, uh, like I said, nobody perfect and stuff like that. But you know, your your talent, your ability, what you bring to the team, especially when you're healthy. Oh man, I remember that game when you hit the game. It was a Leaders Cup game. Yeah, yeah. it was a Leaders Cup game. My boy Clem. Yeah, <laughs> Clem was, was playing D on you, I believe. Right. Yeah, Clem was trying everything. Happy Clem, could. yeah, Clem. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Cleo Cavalu. Shout out to my boy Cleo, man. Cleo, yeah. he he's in the best captains though, bro. I remember that game. You was going off. That was the first time playing against you. Yeah, yeah. That was my and first time playing against you. That was 2017. Yeah, we just That was my first year back. That was yeah. my first year back in France. Yep, that was my first year back in France too. Gotcha. Yeah, it was my first year uh, back in France. So, yeah, bro. But uh, I, well, I do want to say on this. Thanks for having me, bro. I want to say here in France. Shout out to all the teams I've been on, Bolazac, um, uh, BBD, or whatever, um, Horel, Rowan. And shout out here. I'm here in Camper now, the left Camper, UJAP. Shout out to all my old teammates and stuff. Shout out to my former teammates now. You know, shout out to a lot of uh, the foreigners, Americans out here and stuff like that, that are playing and stuff uh, that's out here in France that we play against in our league, man. Shout out to y'all. And keep keep doing y'all things. Stay strong with this COVID. Uh, this COVID nineteen, uh, it's tough out here, but uh, mentally we just gotta, just gotta stay strong. Well, there it is, man. Y'all got the, the word from the man himself, D Jackson, David Jackson, man. Appreciate you once again, bro. Um, very thankful yes, for having you coming on the show, bro. Um, yeah, appreciate you, bro. Thanks for having me. Yeah, all right, man. Besides yeah. that, man, y'all like going, bro. Y'all like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure we get this thing popping. Share this with your friends. People need to hear these stories, man. D, I'll hit you up, brother. Stay in touch. Yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, same for you, bro. We'll talk soon. All right, my brother. All right, peace. All right.